Tata Technologies, a division of India's automaker Tata Motors, has applied to go public with an initial public offering. It is the IT services arm of Tata Motors, catering to JLR and Tata Motors. Within two years, the cost of electric four-wheeler will be equivalent to the petrol cost, cost of the petrol vehicle and the country will change. Tata Tech offers digital services for engineering and product development. Now, uh, the fundamentals of Tata Technologies are very strong and brokerages are quite bullish as well. We are in investing in all of the technology areas that, uh, that are defining the industries that we serve. Tata Tech's total profit went up by 23% to almost $50 million. The company reported a 15.5% increase in revenue. Hi everybody, Tata Technologies is going to be one of the most sensational IPOs of 2023. And this is a very, very big deal because this is the first Tata company to go IPO in 18 years only after the iconic Tata Consultancy Services. And we all saw how TCS became a star in the Indian stock market with an appreciation of 2600%. And you know what guys, just like TCS became a pioneer in the IT revolution of India, Tata Technologies is a pioneer in the EV revolution of India. But while most news channels only spoke about the numbers and the financials of Tata Tech, very few of them actually taught us the fundamental business strategy of the Tatas. So in this episode today, let's do a deep dive and try to understand why is this Tata Tech IPO such a big deal for the investors? What are the most important business verticals within Tata Technologies? What are the market conditions that are favoring the Tatas in the 21st century? What are the threats in the market that are challenging the position of Tata Technologies in the market? And lastly, what are the study materials to help you understand their business strategies better? But before we move on, let me tell you about an audiobook that I listened to on the Cuckoo FM app while doing the research of this video. It's called Business Kohinoor Ratan Tata. This audiobook is a wonderful account on his personal and business journey and you should definitely check it out. And you should even check out other audiobooks on the Kuku FM app like Start With Why, Chanakya Niti, Bhagat Singh, etc. Kuku FM is India's leading audio shows platform with 2.5 plus million active paid subscribers, 4.5 plus rating and is available in Hindi and all major regional languages. I have been a long term subscriber and recently, for the very first time, Kuku FM is now giving an exclusive 50% discount to users availing their first monthly subscription at just 49 rupees. So you can use my coupon code THINK50 to directly avail it from the download link in my description. So if you're an auditory learner or want to reduce your screen time, Kuku FM is a great way to do it. So if you find this useful, just click the link in my description, apply my code THINK50 and avail the monthly subscription today. The first thing we need to understand is why is the Tata Technology IPO so so special and amongst all the IPOs in India, why is every investor specifically excited for this particular IPO? Well, apart from the Tata brand and the EV revolution, the investors are very very excited to see the strong financials of the company. As you can see, their revenues have been growing very steadily from 2380 crores to 3011 crores from FI21 to the third quarter of FI23. Similarly, its profits have gone up from 239 crores in FI21 to 407 crores in the same period. Secondly, this company is a zero debt company, which means it has no debt obligations at all. And lastly, their current ratio is very, very strong. For those who don't know, current ratio is a financial ratio that measures a company's ability to pay its short term obligations. And it is calculated by dividing the company's current assets by its current liabilities. So more this ratio, the better it is for the company. Now, while Reliance has a current ratio of 1.11, Adani Port stands at 1.29 and Tata Tech has a current ratio of 1.87. This means for every rupee of short-term liability it owes, it has 1.87 rupees of assets to pay it off. But if you compare the current ratio of Tata Tech with its direct competitors, you will see that while KPID's current ratio stands at 2.51, Tata LXC stands at 4.13, LNT Technology Services stands at 3.27, and Tata Tech stands at 1.87. And in general, current ratio 1.5 to 3 is considered to be very good. So the Tata brand, its revenues, its profits, and the strong financial ratios are the reason why the Indian investors are very, very keen to see Tata Technologies go IPO. So if this is very, very clear to you, 
let's understand the business case study of tata technologies within 2 years the cost of electric two wheeler electric three wheeler electric four wheeler will be equivalent to the cost of the petrol vehicle and the country will change tata technologies is in the business of partnering with ambitious manufacturing companies particularly companies which engineer products to the marketplace tata tech is a product engineering company that serves the automotive the technology which is needed for the automotive businesses of tata they have uh, sort of mastered the art of making right. low cost evs and are doing really well the vision to help india evolve to electric people tata technologies works in a domain called engineering research and development services and if you don't know how an e r and d company works here's a very very simple explanation of the same Let's say Tesla is releasing their new EV model called Model X and they need expertise in designing, developing and testing. And one of their problem statements is the reduction of cost. Now to do this, Tesla has two options. Number 1 would be to set up an in-house team of scientists, researchers and engineers who can actually do the designing, developing and testing of the product. Now this will involve a tedious recruitment process, payroll processes, HR heads, office infrastructure, giant high-tech equipments and a ton of other procedural work that will cost Tesla both a ton of time and a ton of money. But the second option that they have is to outsource this particular problem to a special company that already has engineers, scientists and researchers who in fact specialize in this type of problem solving. Now this special company is nothing but an engineering research and development company. So what this company will do is they will use computer simulations to actually identify the areas where the materials of the car can be changed. For example, aluminum alloys are commonly used to make cars because they are both light and they have a high tensile strength. So it helps keep the overall weight of the car low and improves the fuel efficiency. However, The problem with aluminum alloys is that they are very very expensive as compared to other materials like steel and this increases the cost of manufacturing of the product. But at the same time if you use steel steel is a very heavy material so it increases the weight of the car and then it decreases the fuel efficiency. So this is where the E R&D company would use computer simulations to actually identify the most efficient shapes and thickness of the aluminum components. Similarly, the scientists will be able to identify which parts could be made using alternate materials like polymers or steel. And the engineers will also analyze the manufacturing process to identify the ways to reduce waste. Eventually, they'll be able to advise Tesla on where to use steel, where to use aluminum alloys, where to use polymers and how to reduce waste in their manufacturing unit. And when this structure is followed, Tesla may be able to decrease the cost of its car by 4.5%. This is how an engineering research and development company actually solves the pain points of their clients. And this gives the clients three major advantages. Number 1, the client doesn't have to spend time, money and resources into hiring scientists, researchers and engineers. They don't have to buy expensive equipment, set up office infrastructure or even give funding. So, they can easily reduce a lot of their cost. Secondly, even at lesser cost, the client still has access to world-class talent with advanced engineering capabilities, research centers and even skilled scientists. And lastly, this partnership can be crucial in an automaker's development of innovative EV technologies. And this could include battery management systems, power trains and even autonomous driving features. So these clients could innovate faster, better at lesser cost. Eventually, they could bring new products into the market faster. This is how an engineering research and development company can actually benefit an automotive client. And this is exactly what Tata Technologies does. In this case, Tata Technologies has 3 major verticals of business. And for each vertical, I'll explain what Tata Tech does so that you have a better idea about not just the numbers but also the incredible work that Tata Technologies is actually doing in India. The first vertical that we have is the automotive industry. And for this, you already know what kind of work Tata Technologies does because of the Tesla example. So for now, let's skip this and I'll give you the rest of the case studies as study materials in the description. The second business vertical is the aerospace and defense sector. For this, we have a case study whereby a company in the aviation industry was looking to make their engines more efficient. And here's where the customer was actually seeking for a partner with a very unique combination of engineering skills, application know-how and development experience. And here's where Tata Technologies came into the picture. And amongst the many things that they did, they implemented something called tool harmonization. For those who don't know, 
Tool harmonization refers to the process of standardizing and aligning tools, methodologies and processes across different teams, different departments and organizations such that the company in general performs more efficiently. And a very primitive example of the same is screws. So if there are 100 different screws being used for an engine, you need to have 100 different manufacturing setups, 100 different screwdrivers, dozens of vendors, and most importantly, you have the headache of managing 100 different screws in your inventory. But if you just design one screw, which could be used in all different places, do you realize how magical the entire process would be? You just need one set of tools, one set of screwdrivers, one vendor, and just one inventory to manage. And when you mass manufacture these screws, the unit cost will obviously go down. And designing this one little screw is what takes an insane level of engineering, design and research from a company like Tata Technologies. This is a very very primitive example of tool harmonization which makes your organization more efficient, it reduces the cost and eventually increases your profits. And in case of this aviation client, the Tata team implemented such an extraordinary level of tool harmonization that it helped the customer realize approximately 20% reduction in their manufacturing costs, 35% reduction in the tool storage space, and 30% less tool inventory for better planned production. Eventually, the customer realized approximately 80% cost saving due to harmonization in the engine maintenance tool. And this brings us to the third vertical which is transportation and construction heavy machinery. For this, we have the classic example of the backhoe loader. Now people, have you seen these giant machines that are actually used for digging and excavation around the city? This machine is called the backhoe loader. So a while back, Tata Tech actually got a problem statement from a leading construction company to actually design a cutting edge backhoe loader which can actually increase their sales in India. So for this project, Tata Tech studied the entire machine, the requirements of the customer, the usage of the machine and even the different terrains and weathers of India. Eventually, they came up with a design by which the machine can actually withstand a wide range of temperatures and operate in almost all altitudes all across India. This was because they knew that the customers who use these machines will actually be working all over India with different weather conditions in each place. Secondly, after learning about the customers, they found out that these workers often work away from home. So they designed a cabin that was big enough to sleep in. And finally, the designers made the machine in such a way that it can actually adopt to the changes of the availability of materials and advances in technology. So the final backhoe loader that they designed was so good that it led to a sales increase of 120% in India. These are the three major verticals of Tata Tech and what they do under each of them. Now the question over here is, if this company was set up in 1989, why is it going IPO now and what are the market conditions that are actually favoring this company right now? Well, firstly, India has emerged as a favorable destination for outsourced ER&D spend. Why? Because foreign clients get the major advantage of reduction in cost, they get cheap labor in India, and this is not only because we charge less, but they also get the advantage of exchange rates. And this makes it extremely beneficial for them. Secondly, there is a steep curve in the EV revolution globally. And this is something that is quite obvious from this Bloomberg graph. This graph basically says that once a country touches the 5% market share of EV in the market, the market share of EV is more likely to explode to touch 25 to 30% in the next 5 years. And by 2029, 48% of the passenger cars in the world are expected to be EVs, which means Tata Technologies addressable market is about to explode in the next 4 to 5 years. And thirdly, to push the EV revolution further, the Indian government has announced policies in the budget that suggest that the Indian government is extremely bullish on the EV revolution in the country. We will promote a shift to use of public transport in urban areas. This will be complemented by clean tech special mobility zones with zero fossil fuel policy and EV. In India, 5,82,625 EVs were sold in August this year, and that's already 46% higher than last year. I believe that what this country will see is a very, very rapid growth in the acceptance of uh, uh, EV technologies. Nowadays, electric mobility is gaining good momentum in the country, and it will be an important tool to develop pollution-free transport. Up to 2030, 30% private car will be electric, then 70% commercial vehicle will be electric, 40% buses will be electric, and 80% two and three wheelers by 2030 will be electric.
So now the question over here is if the government policies are favoring the Tatas, if the market is favoring the Tatas, if the financials are favoring the Tatas, does this mean that Tata Technologies is about to become the next TCS of India? Well, before you jump to any kind of conclusion like this, you also need to understand the risk that Tata Tech is facing in the market. The question is, what the hell could be a risk to such an incredible company? Well, there are three threads that we could find. The first thread is the concentrated client base. As of December 2022, Tata Technologies gets 72.75% of its revenue from just five big clients. And the interesting part is, two of them are their own companies which are Tata Motors and Jaguar Land Rover, which account for almost 40% of the total revenues. This is what we call as concentration risk. So if a huge chunk of revenue is coming from only a few clients, it will drastically affect Tata Technologies revenue even if one of these clients goes bankrupt or chooses to start its own in-house R&D department. Secondly, since their biggest revenue stream comes from the automotive sector, if there is an economic slowdown, the automotive sector is going to be one of the first sectors to be hit. Why? Because cars are considered to be luxuries and people often postpone their decisions of buying a car during an economic slowdown. So if the automotive sector gets hit, then Tata technology will also be hit. This is the reason why Tata Tech is actually focusing on different locations such as China, North America and UK in order to diversify its clientele. And the last risk that we could find is the talent pool in India. So although we have a lot of population in India, there is still a very big gap in terms of the skill sets of our workers. And to de-risk this, Tata Tech has actually signed a groundbreaking agreement with the government of Karnataka to revamp the 150 industrial training institutes in Karnataka. And Tata Tech has also collaborated with many state governments including Tamil Nadu, Assam and UP. So soon enough, these ITIs will cater to advanced skill requirements of the Industry 4.0 revolution and will help prospective employers to bag great talents at scale. So if the Tatas can actually diversify their clientele, if the automobile sector is resilient enough to withstand the economic slowdowns, and if the Tatas are able to find a consistent pool of great talent, they'll be able to de-risk themselves from the threats in the market. This is a story of the hype of the Tata Tech IPO, the business they do, the threats they face, and most importantly, their position in the growth story of India. If this is very, very clear to you, now you may have a look at all the study materials in the description to understand their business better. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.